Hi friend, all of us have done things in our lives that we regret. All of us have committed sins. And most of us know that desire to have the burden, the, the, the weight of our sin lifted off, the shame associated with it. So we flee to the blood of Jesus to wash away our sins. But there is a place that remorse and guilt plays in helping us change course and to try and not do those things again and, and rectify what is rectifiable, okay? Today in my interview with Joe Scheidler, the last part of an eight-part series, we look at the role of guilt and Joe gets to ask me some questions. I hope that you find this inspirational. There are people who have fallen, who have either been involved in an abortion or have not fought against one or who just haven't made a, a, an issue of, of uh, abortion and they feel guilty. No, there's still time. You're still alive, there's still tomorrow, there's still this afternoon. Uh, get active, get active. The guilt can be used. It, it's not good for anything else. Just to sit around and feel guilty is one of the biggest wastes of time you can imagine. But make that guilt cause you to act and change your attitude, change your actions. There are so many things you can do. You can, you can support pro-life groups. You can go out yourself. You can um, get the literature. There are just so many things you can do to change the lethargy or the inaction uh, immediately. I mean, why wait around and why feel bad about it? Put that aside and do something positive. And one of the positive things is just to walk down to an abortion clinic and stand there and talk to whatever woman comes along, it might be the very thing she's waiting for. Especially right? post-abortive women and post-abortive dads yes. who either willingly participated in the death of their child or were begging, please don't kill our baby, you know, powerless to stop it. Yeah. Having those uh, speak to those who have participated <clears throat> in child killing about the impact that they could have at the abortion mill and in the general discussion. Right, exactly. They, they have the experience and they have the incentive now. They have the incentive. Sooner or later, they want to do something to negate, to, make, to lessen their involvement, and so they have to do something positive. And they're the ones to talk to, to a person contemplating abortion or simply someone who supports abortion and thinks it's all right. Uh, whether it's a neighbor, a friend, whoever, Bring it up, bring up the issue, and try to convert, change people's hearts and minds. It's got to happen, and we're the ones to do it. It doesn't just happen, it happens through people who have been involved one way or another, putting their beliefs into action. Reparation. Right. Repair. Repair, reparare. Mm. You've been on the front lines since Roe versus Wade, over four decades, and you're still in the fight. What word of encouragement do you have for those who are new to the movement and feeling burned out, feeling despair? What can you say to them to keep them in? The burnout, despair, all those things can be, can be fuel, can be uh, instrumental in more action. Uh, you don't like that feeling. You don't like feeling burnt out. You don't like feeling uh, useless. So you go against that and you read something more, you get into a conversation, you uh, go to the clinic, you do something positive to, to override that feeling. Burnout is a bad feeling. Nobody likes it, whatever it is. Uh, feeling, feeling that you, you can no more to do, no place to go. You always do. You, you still have a heartbeat. You still got brain waves. You can still move around a little bit. Um, use it. Uh, you, you simply have to constantly, because we all have it. I sit at my desk and I think, oh, gee, I'm burnt out. I've done everything I can do. I'm tired and so on. And then I get a call from Randy Terry to come down and be on his show. Uh, do it. Do it, and do it with enthusiasm. And if the enthusiasm isn't always there, put it there. Pretend, act a little bit, and it, it may begin to be 
could come true. So uh, wishing won't make it so, but uh, doing will. Just doing what you think you ought to do, and it becomes the reality. And then the burnout's gone because you're not, you're, you're, uh, you're still burning. What questions would you like to ask me, if any? Do you have any questions? You want? Now, now you get to play the host. It's Randy, kind of what, what got you into the pro-life movement? What particular event or happening made you decide to go all out? Um, when I was in Bible college, we saw a series put out by Francis Schaeffer called, I think, Whatever Happened to the Human Race. Right. And I remember sitting in the chair, I was in my senior year, sobbing my eyes out, thinking, this is so horrible. Abortion is so evil, but it's a social issue. And because I wasn't Catholic and I had not integrated spirituality with duty to fellow man, you know, tangible help, I thought my duty is to preach the gospel and, you know, lead souls to Christ so they can get to heaven, but never mind all these social political issues. But it, I, it was, I was conflicted, so I was sobbing. And then fast forward a couple years, I was at a concert after Keith Green died, and a man named Baba Yalla was singing about infant doe, that little Down syndrome baby that they starved to death in Indiana. Remember right. they had the trach problem or the right. uh, esophagus problem? And again, I was sitting there shaking. I was sobbing so hard. And I went up to Baba Yalla when that was over, and I said, I believe God is going to use me to impact the nation, to fight against abortion. And I had, you know, I, my eyes were flashing. And he, he's blind, but the, the intensity of what I said was so gripping to him, he stepped back. And when we met again years later, and he came to sing at one of our Operation Rescue events, he remembered the conversation. He remembered meeting me. He remembered how jolted he was by what I said that night after hearing him sing.